What is going on, members of the Barrio? It's John coming to you from New York, and after four months in Mexico, I am finally back home. And with all my travels, I've always taken you guys to different hotels, different Airbnbs, but today for the first time, I'm gonna be taking you guys inside my actual apartment in New York and give you a little bit of a tour of what it's like to actually live here. Welcome to the inside of my building, and as you can see, our doorman quit many years ago. No, we don't have a doorman, we don't have an elevator, and the good news about that is if you live in a walk-up apartment in Manhattan, the price is definitely going to be cheaper. The flip side to that is that your doorman will watch your mail, and it's extra security, so I, I guess there's a bit of a trade-off. Folks, we are going up. We're going that way. We're going four floors up. When you live on the fourth floor of a building without an elevator, it's kind of, you pick and choose your trips wisely. I don't like just to go outside for no reason. I always like to bunch things up, take out the garbage, go to CVS, uh, stuff like that. It also makes me humble when I travel because if I get an Airbnb in another city and I've got to take stairs, usually it's not as bad as this. And this is where I spend most of my year. All right, so we have made it to my apartment, and you know, a lot of people, when they come in here, they don't think it's too small until I, they turn right here, and they realize, well, now there isn't a whole lot of space. The apartment's approximately 350 square feet. It is a two-bedroom apartment, so I live here with my twin brother, and yes, we, we somehow make it work. So uh, the bathroom, well, there's not much to show here. The, uh, the coolest part about the bathroom, I think, is the shower curtain. Being a travel vlogger, every day I'm just like reminded of places I want to go. I can just kind of you know, look around, show you where I've been for months in Mexico. Uh, the tub is actually a decent size. I have no problem fitting in here. Uh, I wouldn't say this is like a Japanese-style bathroom where you can barely fit your feet. Uh, on the toilet and then close the door. So it's, it's enough space for one person at a time to use the bathroom, but it, it's not big at all. We're gonna start with my twin brother's room, and uh, this is actually not my twin. How's it going, guys? This I am related though. <laughs> this is Mike, yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of related, I guess, somehow. He's actually crashing here for a night, so he's keeping my brother's room can't warm. He can't complain. Uh, I don't wanna show his room too much. He's got a cool map here. My room is pretty much exactly the same. It's almost identical to his, so we're gonna, we're gonna get there in a second. This is the living room slash kitchen at the same time. I gave you a quick shot of it before. Uh, a lot of things in this apartment have multiple uses. When you have a small space, you've got to be creative. So let's start with a couch. If, if we move these items, you actually can fold this couch out and it turns into a bed. So we've had a lot of friends uh, throughout the years sleep here. So this couch can stretch kind of down the hallway. And yeah, we can sleep people. Another very important thing if you are planning a really small space, mirrors everywhere. Mirrors are great, especially when you have good light coming in. It gives the illusion of space when you don't have too much. The refrigerator is a bit of a shrine to our traveling addiction. I've got stuff from all over the world here. We, we, we like to collect money from different countries. My brother was in Japan. Uh, we've got Singapore from a friend. This is my favorite right here, the Che Guevara uh, Cuban banknote, three pesos. Chile, Poland, just random photos from when we were kids. You guys might recognize this girl right here. Uh, we, we do have enough space to cook. We have a, you know, a normal size oven, uh, plenty of shelf space for dishes, big sink, uh, the refrigerator itself, plenty of size. We have a you know, full size freezer here. Uh, back to the theme of conserving space, this table can actually, I'm not gonna do it, but it can pull out here, and you can pull it out from this side too. If we wanted to have a dinner party here for four or five people, we could get this table to take up a lot of the kitchen here. So again, you've always gotta be thinking, what can you put in a small apartment that'll make a lot of sense and not take up too much space? And now we're gonna go to my room where I spend the most time. And it's just enough for me, to be honest with you. You can see I have enough room for a little desk, a full-size bed, mirror, great for you know projecting space. It's really not here. Um, 
I've talked about how I used to be a broadcaster, so these are some old media passes that I've had from just like different games, jets, like different places that I worked, uh, bowl games, all sorts of stuff. Uh, definitely nice to have some, some shelves like this. We actually built this here. Got my suitcases up there. I actually have all of my shoes here. I can never travel with this much stuff, so that's what's cool. Uh, this is my laptop that I used to edit with. I've got some Genesis playing before, Greatest Hits. Got my television. Adriana actually made that for me right there. A uh, closet's really not too big. I don't even know what the heck this is. It's like a masquerade party I went to a while ago. Um, got my clothes here, suit that I never wear anymore. I think I wore it to a wedding. It was like the, the last time I've used it in ages. I actually bought these little um, shelf things for our clothes. And uh, the bed's pretty comfortable. We've had this bed for the six years we've been in the apartment. If you have an apartment in New York City, there's gonna be at least one fire escape. Uh, I have a fire escape in my room. So, theoretically, I could go out here. I usually don't see a reason to. Um, we don't really have much of a view. It's kind of one of the trade-offs. So sometimes you can't even tell what the weather is like unless you go out there and actually lean your head out. This is my little room. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys to one more spot in the building and then we're gonna talk about how much you actually have to pay for this. Welcome to the rooftop of our building and we are in the heart of Greenwich Village right now. So, you know, when I talk about pricing here, you have to factor in this is one of the most popular neighborhoods in all of Manhattan for very good reasons, of course. We've got an absolutely spectacular view of the Freedom Tower and all of downtown Manhattan. So you must be curious, how much does this little apartment cost in the heart of Greenwich Village? Well, the answer is my brother and I pay $2,700 combined, so about $1,350 each to live here. When we actually moved in, it was only $1,000 each. So the rent has gone up every year for the last six years, which is just kind of the cost of living in New York City. It is very expensive. It is a lot more expensive than almost any other place I've traveled in the world, but I would not trade this location for anything. I'm not gonna live here forever. In fact, I'm probably gonna be moving in the next year or two, but to spend a, a nice chunk of, of my late 20s and early 30s living in Greenwich Village in Manhattan when I'm not traveling, it's such an exciting city, and you spend a lot of money, you don't get a lot of space, but for me, it is completely worth it. I'm curious, tell me in the comments, would you live in this apartment with somebody else? Do you think it's too expensive compared to where you're from? Do you spend more money? Let's uh, let's get a little discussion going. All right guys, we've got a lot more coming up from New York City in the next month, and then a trip to another country, but I haven't announced it yet. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you are new. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.